And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer to the temple. One half of the double-headed monster known as Two Little Mice Studios, creators <laughs> of the upcoming Broken Compass. And I'm going to apologize in advance if I screw up pronunciation. Um, Simone <laughs> Formicola. It's quite perfect, thank you. <laughs> how, you do, how are you doing today, man? Good, good. I think we are doing good. Um, our campaign is doing fine. It's, mm -hmm. it's a really uh, a fine moment for us. The first time we are dealing with a, an international world, an international gaming community. Uh, it's not our first game, but it, it's our very first time to, to try and interact with so, so, so different, so many different people who, who are used to so many different games than, than our little Italian group of gaming community. So, wow, wonderful. It's a, really a, an experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to open with the humble beginnings in a, lot, okay. in a lot of these kind of things. So with that in mind, walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what was it that made it stick? My first introduction to role playing game as a oh it's I, I started uh, role playing game quite I, I wasn't so young I think I was past my twenty fifth twenty fifth I mm -hmm. I can't remember well a couple of friends in a, during a holiday it was four of us and one night they asked me why not to try to some some RPG, so so I tried. Mm -hmm. It was it was very, um, uh, like you said, um, it was a, a defining moment. I I never really uh, tried something like this, uh, apart from the fact that I in, in my life uh, I'm both a, a game designer, but uh, first first to 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 prior to becoming a game designer, I, I was I am. Still now an actor, you know, mm -hmm. a triadical actor. So uh, it was um, a different kind of uh, you know performance of uh, uh, dealing with a character and um, very fun. Obviously, mm -hmm. my my first um, how do you say first uh, encounter with the hobby uh, three three hundred uh, around was uh, not by the um, role playing game. But with uh, war games, I was a war gamer before being a role play, a role player. So uh, it was my, my first thing actually since I was very very young. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I started with Dungeons and Dragons. Was my very first experience in the role playing game. Uh, then even thanks to to Rico, to Ricardo, my my partner in crime. As you said, the, the other head of Two Little Mice, I discovered so many uh, more titles. We, we love uh, Cyberpunk 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, we love another, uh, an, an Italian uh, role playing game, very famous in Italy, but never, it was never been translated. So it's not well known in the rest of the world. His name is Cine Requia. It's like a mm -hmm. fanta historical game. Uh, very very peculiar, mm -hmm. and and so on, and and then uh, several years later, uh, we started. Uh, we we meet me and Ricardo as as an actor and a di director. He's a director uh, to to make a, a small, um, I can say, a web series about another Italian RPG, uh, Anime Sangue. It's called. It's on Amazon Prime, uh, uh, both in uh, in England and in uh, in USA. And then we we meet this strange world of game designing of uh, role playing gamer. And then we thought one day, why, why why not try it? Why not bring our ideas not only in a in, in the video media in the in a series or in a or in a play, 
but even uh, in, a, in a different media, such as a long plain book. <laughs> and so here we are, mm -hmm. three years later from our first attempt in this world, uh, here we are trying to, <laughs> to visit the world. Yeah. Now, something that I appreciated when I found out about Broken Compass is mm -hmm. it wearing its influences on its, um, on its sleeve. Speci yeah. specifically the whole the whole the whole old adventure serial kind of motif um was was that something you had was that something you guys had grown up on quite quite a bit because i'm curious what was the inspiration to do that um particular st style of um adventure <laughs> uh, yeah term. yeah surely it's a genre it's a the adventure genre in, in particular the archaeological adventure but mm -hmm. Not just that; um, it, it's a gen we we really love, we deeply love. Uh, Broken Compass is a is a concept we um, we used to play for some years with different um, systems from, taken from other games uh, before uh, becoming one one of our own, an original system mm -hmm. like like that one. But we love the uh, as you can say the. Um, the vibe, the mood of this kind of movie where everything is so big, so great, and so simple. The world of Indiana Jones or Uncharted or Tomb Raider, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's like a, a version of our world, less complicated, uh, when it's possible to go somewhere and discover uh, some, something that no one ever discovered before a city, a lost temple, lost city, a lost continent, if you're really, really lucky. Uh, so th this approach, this uh, positive approach, this positive mood, uh, really, we, we, we really love it. We wanted to bring in in a, in a tabletop role-playing game. Which <laughs> I can, de I can definitely, um, I can definitely get, I can definitely get that. And with it now within the with within the setup i will i will admit that one of the things that <laughs> that made me laugh was the um name name of the expansion material that you that you set up and calling it luck tales oh, to, the, to the point where i bust out, when i was reading through that i bust out laughing going gee i wonder what i wonder what the inspiration for that name was <laughs> We we <laughs> we really have some lots of quotas, <laughs> no, yeah, of quotas here and there in uh, in the game inside the book are full of quotas from film, from movies, from games. We we really love uh, being uh, this game being a part of, of a culture, of pop mm -hmm. culture, of uh, of something that you know you have seen. Uh, it's death. It's it's death things. You 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 just know you need to uh, bring it into your game to uh, bring it out from your mind, from your memory, uh, from your childhood memories, or from your uh, recent memories, and uh, take out on the game. Obviously, mm -hmm. luck it was a, a, a luck combination of the word luck, who is the uh, uh, basic of our system. It's mm -hmm. called fortune system both from the fortune, but luck is an important, uh, plays an important role uh, in the system. And we, we love DuckTales. <laughs> it's another way to, to live an adventure uh, opera, as you can see. And so from this, this meeting was born the DuckTales, where lots of uh, friends, uh, other Italian game designers, um, help us to forge this unique module we 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 give we we, we want to give to uh, to all our bakers during the kickstarter yeah now speaking speaking of the fortune system i do want i do want to touch on that um yeah now as i'm reading it right the fortune system is based less on rolling high or rolling low and more on rolling in sets yes um now now i'm from i've been familiar with the whole with the whole concept of rolling in sets from a few other games although not as many as some might think <laughs> but 
whenever whenever the whenever there's any sort of any sort of set rolling, there's always in the past there's been the risk of having those sets be a bit swingy, where you either roll really well or you roll really terribly. Um, is that something that you guys ever encountered during playtesting? Um. Uh, yes and no. Um, we like the fact that we uh, two, three, four, or five of a kind. You have four different and very clear uh, level of d difficulty in everything you do in the game, in a danger, in a challenges, and an enemy. Mm -hmm. Everything is said to be basic, um, critical, extreme, or impossible. And you need two of a kind for a basic, three of a kind for a critical, etc. It's really just that. Uh, but when uh, try when playtesting this game, uh, we use uh, another, um, as you can see, mechanic, another feature. Um, you can reroll part of the dice. You uh, risking uh, your successes to have more success. Uh, yeah. For example, you thought I'm, I'm trying to explain this in English. It's not easy for me, so I'm doing my best. <laughs> So no worries, I, I, appreci I appreciate the effort. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me if it's totally non-comprehensive. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you toss, uh, for example, five dices, and you want to score uh, three of a kind, mm -hmm. but you just score uh, two of a kind, uh, you can decide whether to risk uh, the dice, the, the three left dice. You, you take your two of a kind and... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Reroll just the dice that do not have uh, made any combination, any success. And if you reroll the dice and you perform, you obtain another success. Good for you. You maybe you uh, change your two of a kind into a three of a kind, or maybe you are very lucky and you uh, obtain another different three of a kind. But if you reroll your dice and you obtain nothing new, you lose one of the combination you have made in your first attempt. Mm -hmm. What does it mean in the game? It means that you have um, quite every time you have the chance to get the success you need or you want, but you risk to lose some of the success that do it something in the game. Yeah. It's an, a no fake, a fail, fail forward game. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a game in which um, every legal success counts. Uh, maybe it, it's a um, damage control, or maybe it's, it needs to uh, avoiding some dangerous, uh, uh, as you can say, uh, uh, come back, um, outcome, some dangerous outcome of your challenge. Uh, but having zero successes or having a true of a kind, that is a basic success, is very different. Uh, in this way, you are always in charge of your destiny, of your fortune. As we as we say, and it helps to um, uh, to have um, a best chance of success mm -hmm. uh, to 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 limitate what you do what you were saying before to the fact that I either do what I have to or fail miserably. Uh, we tend to avoid that uh, by by risking by let you risk in the dice and by let a system uh, that says there is no fail whatsoever. You are a hero, you are the, the main character of your story, so unless you die, unless you, you fail too much during your adventure and end up uh, dying a certain death, as, you, as we call it, uh, you, you are the hero, so you are succeeding some way. I hope it it was something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and <laughs> understandable. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. I think it, given the given the name, the fortune system. I think I think it's yeah. clear that luck plays a very plays a very a major role. role. A major role. Yes. Um. Uh. And taking taking that taking that into account, um, mm -hmm. when it comes. Now, one of the go one of the goal one of the um, add-ons I saw, of course, was the custom dice, where instead of using yeah. just a standard d6, it's using a compass rose with um, the last two being a skull and the um, bro and the compass, compass logo. logo. Yeah. Um, what 
even with even with like when I saw when I saw that kind of custom dice, I was wondering if you guys had in, had implied some sort of extra effect with the skull and compass, but I'm guessing that's not really the case. No, 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 no. They have no no special effect. We just uh, think they are really nice, <laughs> and it's easier to spot the the combination, the two of a kind, the three of a kind, etc., yeah. than with a, a normal dice. Yeah, that's all. Uh in early, in 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 early playtests, was there was there ever the thought of having um, set of having sequences count, count as well count as well as sets, or was that something that you guys decided wouldn't um, work early on? No, we decided we decided not to work with um, with anything except two, three, or four of a kind mm -hmm. uh, from early on. Uh, because when you uh, toss six dice, which is the maximum you may have uh, at creation without any bonuses due into the roll or due into to other things, um, at least there is one possibility <laughs> that you do not score not even one, two of a kind with six dice. Mm -hmm. If uh, I... Uh, bring into consideration uh, even a scale. It, it, it's impossible to to fail even with six dice, and we do not uh, like that. Yeah. So no, as we as we say, is a very uh, very nice way to fail. Mm -hmm. Now, in the core in the core book, the adventure journal, um, mm -hmm. it's mentioned that the set that the setting you're going for is 1999. Yeah. Um, what was what was the reasoning for choosing that specific uh, year? Uh, we choose a, a contemporary era because we we like it. We we like to give the the basic um, to the core book of the game this this mood, uh, this contemporary mood. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we choose the the late nineties because the technology there was. A little less functioning than, than ours today. There is no internet everywhere. Um, traveling was a little bit um, harder. Uh, there is, uh, you can still discover something in 1999. There are no, uh, no social medias uh, and so on. It's the last time uh, in which you can find uh, a, a place entirely alien, different from mm -hmm. yours, where, um, where globalization did not uh, hit quite uh, everything, like in, in our times, like 20 years later. Mm -hmm. and, and even because it's the edge of the millennium, so it's an important date, it's a, somehow, I don't know, it, it seems important to us. Um, that's why, and, and yeah. we choose to um, bring uh, another uh, very characteristic uh, epoch, uh, the date, uh, which is the the golden age, we called it, into the first expansion, which is the 20s and 30s. So the Mummy and Indiana Jones, we uh, just uh, bring them into an expansion to say it's uh, another thing. We, we know, you know, Indiana Jones is that... Uh, it's precisely in your mind why we want you to experience the basic of the game in an era uh, which is nearer to you when you can use, I don't know, helicopters. <laughs> For me, it's important. In, in the movie I made when I play, I put, uh, and I see when I play these games, an helicopter is important. So in the basic, uh, uh, I need to, to, to may tell you it's an helicopter or, I don't know, uh, a, sub, uh, a scuba diving. Mm -hmm. uh, modern school of diving. There are uh, lots of little things that we thought uh, it needed to be in the core book, and ninety nine was perfect for this. Yeah, and to now to to that end, something that I f something that I definitely find interesting is the hard, the kind of hardcover that you're going with the with the physical version of the adventure journal. Mm -hmm. Um, where it, lo it looks like it looks like one of those leather bound one of those leather bound journals um, that you'd f that you'd find when when looking for just standard office supplies. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Whose idea was it to go to go with that to go with that approach instead of a standard hardcover? Uh, it was ours, both me and uh, Rico, because um, we want the, in particular the the, the core book to uh, be a, a real diary, like an adventure diary. So you can bring it with you. It's smaller. Uh, it's fifteen for twenty three uh, centimeters. Uh, have your 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 pencil with you. It has an elastic closure. Uh, he has the every feature to bring in with you. Toss it in your purse or in your backpack, and not to fear it could be damaged. Because uh, we we like the idea that you can play everywhere. You can go on a train, bring it out with you, play with your friends on a train, on a boat. While you are traveling, you can play uh, ahead of your travels like uh, a true adventurer. So that, that was the idea, to give you this, uh, this object you can always have with you without any, without any problems. Yeah. Um, you, could play, you could play it on a boat. You could play it with a coat. <laughs> yeah, I, sorry, I had I had to get a Dr. Seuss <laughs> joke out of my system. <laughs> That's good. Um, and with and with it within within that, some now of course now of course there's the there's um the notion of the um sound of the soundtrack and well. It, mm -hmm. That that's gonna, that's going to be added, and while it didn't while it didn't go into um, the details of it, um, is like who like walk me through how the how the idea of adding a soundtrack to the projects came to be was that something you guys always wanted to do? Yes, yes. Uh, as I said before, we uh, came to the video. I was an actor. I, I am an actor. Rico is a director. So we work with with, uh, with others, and in particular, we um, with a composer who follow us uh, in, uh, in in others project, the video project in the series, and uh, in other project we we made uh, some years ago. So we. Uh, we wanted to bring him into this world to give uh, uh, the player the opportunity of having a soundtrack, a custom-made soundtrack uh, made by an artist who works in, in video, in movies, in series, uh, to have that precise mood uh, like in the TV, like in a movie, uh, which is one, one, of, one of the things dear to us. Yeah. And... Now, when it comes now, when it comes to now, I think this is I think this is fairly obvious. But given given the die type and given the given the way the quick start at the very least is set up, would it be fair of me to say that you, that um this is a game that favors theater of the mind instead of go instead of going standard map based? Obviously, yes, yes. We we favors the theater of the mind. Mm -hmm. uh, many many beggars ask the, the same questions throughout the all groups throughout the Kickstarter. Um, but personally, I am I, I never played with with miniatures or maps <laughs> in my in my uh, game of life. I, I have to admit that. So I always played with a theater of the mind. I because I I like the idea that uh, when we are in a room, I don't know, of an ancient ruin in Broken Compass, um, we can find what we need. So the player can ask the master, I, I'm looking for lever, I don't know, I'm looking for uh, something, for uh, uh, something to throw. A and then the, the same room uh, grow with us, uh, mm -hmm. becomes more detailed with the players, and with the master's um, guide, so it, it, it's I, I like the idea that it's not I, I not um, bring a map, or uh, pre-drawn map in a play, uh, and, and I tell you what I put in there. I like the idea that we put something there, 
I'm searching for something, I do uh, an incredible success, I find what I'm looking for. I don't know, it's, it's not uh, easy, but it, it's there. I don't know, in an ancient ruin, there's a, a sword that catches fire. It, possibility. <laughs> so it happens in a thousand of movies. So yeah, there's just mm -hmm. that. Uh, so, so it's fine. I, I prefer because it, it grants the, the possibility are endless with years of mind. And we like to push the game in that direction when everyone cooperates to bring a story to life together. That's our philosophy, game philosophy, yeah. as you can say. And when it, now when it comes to, when it comes to that, and, gi and given the, given the, even though this term gets overused a bit, cinematic nature of yeah. <laughs> the fortune system, how how do you guys feel about the concept of fail forward? Since that's one that always sparks a bit of debate among designers. <laughs> uh, how do we intend to fail forward? Um, for, for us, it's it's this: uh, when you uh, try to perform an action, you will perform that action. No one will stop you from that. What ca could possibly go wrong is what you want to achieve by performing that action. Example, I want to uh, smash a door, break a door uh, to escape from a prison. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I roll, and if I fail, the door breaks in every case. There is no way that I am stuck in this situation, and there is no way out, because we are in a movie. The movie always go on uh, but instead we said uh, you break the door but on the other side you didn't hear there are two guards that now are shooting at you crap this is our way to um, to mean the fade forward uh, or for example I, I'm going to the lost temple in a jungle I don't know somewhere in, in some country and I get lost why? Perfectly. I will find those same temple I'm looking for, but instead of finding the entrance while wandering in the jungle, I will fall off a cliff and maybe, uh, I don't know, hurt myself badly, and then I will see the entrance of the temple. But the film goes on, the show goes on where the players want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the exact uh, direction where the uh, the, the, the play will go and the movie the, the movie will go um, just we, we used to say you have two roads to go towards your goal one is a shiny road uh, where no one gets uh, harsh the other one is the creepy road full of crowds that try to hit your eyeballs I don't know but you are always going in the right direction like like Indiana Jones uh, mm -hmm. as I say in the Indiana Jones movie if he goes left the, the temple is left if he go right, goes right the temple is right if he's fall from the bridge the temple is under the bridge and falling from, of the bridge was the only way to find temple entrance great that's that's proper compass yeah and now when it now when it comes to when it comes to the concept of rivals, which is mm -hmm. which is something I def I definitely find interesting. Um, how how do you how do you how would you usually go? I w it would be easy to just to just say a rival is a um, is an antagonist level NPC, but in Broken Compass, how how would you go about making a rival? Um, have a lot have a lot more influence than just being a NPC in this regard. Oh, um, let's start saying that rivals are a fundamental element in every broken compass mm -hmm. um, session. You cannot have broken compass without the adventurers, the treasure, and the rival. Why is that? The rival is someone uh, we say that is going after your same treasure but for entirely different, different uh, reasons. Uh, 
and it's fundamental for Brand Compass because the rival um, bring in the game uh, another, uh, as you can say, uh, another difficulty. That, that is the time. You have the, you, you run the risk to um, get to the treasure too late. Mm -hmm. I can move this. That, that's your real, uh, real danger out there. And so during the game, uh, the rival, uh, just to say in, uh, in uh, talking about mechanics of the game, the rival cannot be defeated entirely, cannot be killed until the season finale. Mm -hmm. For example, um, a season is a campaign, a broken compass campaign. That can go on for about three, I don't know, three, six, ten sessions. Uh, and until the season finale, he is like you. He has luck, like you have luck. So when you should kill him, someone save him, or I don't know, every, everything explodes and he falls, and you think he's dead, but he's not dead, he will come back without an arm. I don't know, but he's coming back. And throughout the game, uh, you can find uh, some clues about him. You can find two types of clues uh, playing Broken Compass. The clues about the treasure, that tells you maybe where is the treasure, what mm -hmm. are the traps uh, defending the treasure, how to uh, overcome the, the, the riddles, etc., etc. Or the clues about the rival that needs, that uh, serves um, the master to uh, build uh, as you can say, a reputation for your rival. Maybe you find that the rival is looking for the treasure because he, he thinks the treasure has magical properties, and then you find that he's, a, I don't know, a sick, uh, a sick, a sick uh, boy, it's a sick uh, son, so he won't help me. Mm -hmm. And maybe in the last scene, when you are fighting him and he's winning, you can use the clues against him and say, what would your son think about you killing innocent adventurer? Mm -hmm. And he maybe stumbled. So uh, we use the rival like a, an entity. It's way, way more than an NPC. It's an entity that it's always uh, looking for your same treasure and it has more money, more man, more means than you. And so you are always against him, even when it doesn't appear. That's the, the one of the main... Uh, things about broken compass even if uh, in a section in a session uh, the rival does not appear you know that he's searching for your same treasure so you can lose time in your race against him so it is <laughs> an, uh, an, an overwhelming presence i don't know how to say it better mm -hmm. now when it comes to the creation the creation of adv of adventures there's a f there's a few things that I want that I was that I was curious about. The first being, um, I noticed now I I noticed that instead of do instead of doing um, a standard a standard health approach, mm -hmm. you have the combination of luck and the no, and the notion of I feel with positive and negative modifiers for how, for yeah. how someone feels on that on that regard. Um, how did what was the reasoning behind doing that particular setup? Ah, regarding the health problem, mm -hmm. uh, we use we prefer uh, saying that you are not su superhumanly, I don't know, uh, <laughs> supernaturally resistant. Mm -hmm. you, you cannot stand three shots in the chest. But we prefer to say you are very lucky. You are the main character of your story. Uh, so when uh, an enemy shoots you or the ceilings uh, crumbles on you and you fail your, your, your task, your challenge to overcome this danger, uh, you succeed, but just thanks to your luck, your lucky star. So you lose luck going on in your adventure. And luck is the only thing that... Um, that gives you this status of main character. It's, it's mm -hmm. like a plot shield. Uh, and we think it's way more uh, cooler and it's way more useful in a play because uh, everything is in danger. And so I, I, uh, I haven't the need to say, mm, he hit me with a sword or he hit me with a knife, so 
maybe he gives uh, uh, is less dangerous, is more dangerous. He shoots me, but no, you are lucky that he's shooting you. A, he not uh, wound you fatally. You're lucky that you're falling off, off a cliff and you uh, find a tree and not fall to fall to your death. You're lucky that in a brawl, no one put, puts out a, puts a knife into you. You're just lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, and to um, add. Uh, something more spicy to these uh, mechanics, we have the, the, the feeling. You may feel in certain ways. Um, sometimes you, your luck isn't enough to, <laughs> to protect you from every arm. Uh, so you may feel, I don't know, bleeding. So you are, you are several status, both positive and negative. I feel good and I feel bad, as we say. Mm -hmm. That um, serves the master and the players to uh, have a um, have a help to um, to tell how uh, the, the adventurer is feeling at the moment maybe he's fighting off an entire horde alone so he's feeling powerful but uh, he needs to sacrifice someone is shooting his his brother so i put myself in the line of fire I refused. I I do not use my luck to uh, to go unskated, so I feel bleeding. I let myself be bleeding to save another. It, it's a system. Uh, uh, it's basically, uh, as you can say, um, there are several instruments to serve the purpose to the storytelling. So mm -hmm. everything can be. Uh, I fall from twenty feet. Okay, you are not die. Okay, you are lucky, but you sprained a ankle. I don't know, so I need some status to 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 do it. To to the I I saw the movies. Even the hero in the movies sometimes gets shot. Sometimes I don't know. Uh, doesn't feel um, well at all. Maybe gets poisoned. Maybe or maybe he's great. He's really great. He's feeling powerful. He's feeling invincible. I don't know. Uh, he's feeling confident. Um, that's that's the reason behind the the two things that um, have taken the place of the normal health bar, or I don't know, something like that. And now, when now um, when it comes now when it comes to now when it comes to when it comes to character cre comes to um, mm -hmm. character creation. Um, when I see when I see. A con I see a concept like the like the tags for for example in the part about call me if you need a blank. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm reminded of is th is things like aspects in games like Fate, and in that regard, could could the ta could the tags play and play an effect on them um, dice rolls? I.e., could they be seen as a mo as a modifier if appropriate? Um, well, no, the tag uh, comes into play only during the character creation. It's a way to uh, to, to to grant the players to uh, make an adventurer in one minute. I don't know, thirty seconds. Uh, when you are creating your character, you choose uh, from a list. You choose two tags mm -hmm. that define your character. For example. You are a daredevil action hero or a um, gunslinger playboy or a professor soldier. I don't know. Every tag gives you a uh, set amount of, um, of ability points. Ability. Um, and so the, the sum of these two uh, tags gives you quite every point you need in your creation you have just another couple of points uh, to put it uh, freely mm -hmm. for customization and um you got the point and no that's not all because every tag gives you an expertise mm -hmm. that's a word that you can use to re-roll your dice as i i said before without risking to lose anything Example, you are a gunslinger, you have your point, you put your point on the character sheet, and you have the expertise gun or mm -hmm. revolver, pistol, sorry, 
or revolver. So when you're uh, using a revolver, you can always uh, re-roll part of your dice, even when you score zero successes. So when you are nothing to risk, you can re-roll because it's your field of expertise. Um, but apart from the character creation, uh, then it's yours. You have the, the ability and the expertise, and uh, those two words will never uh, come into the play. Yep. Now, when it, now in this in the same regard, when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the skills and fields, um, mm -hmm. I'm get I'm guessing that any that any that the idea of a raw skill roll is not going to happen often. Uh, sorry, a raw skill roll. I.e. I.e. a skill I.e. rolling just the skill and not rolling the field. Ah uh, no, it's impossible. You are always rolling, um, your number of dice is always your skill plus your field, of ex uh, your, field your relevant field. Uh, sometimes, most of the times, uh, you use the field down which the, the, the skill is, is written on your character sheet, but the master or the player could uh, improvise some other uh, junction. I don't know, uh, if I'm... Participating in a brawl, I I roll my dice um, fight plus action, which is fight um, field. But if I am trying to punch a bear, I don't know. I, I'm not uh, <laughs> a very smart person. But if I'm trying to punch a bear, I will roll uh, fight plus uh, wild. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Or if I'm trying to uh, hit uh, precise points. Maybe I would try to roll fight plus uh, knowledge. I don't know. So, so, so in, other, in other words, the sca the skills and fields aren't um, aren't spe no. aren't um, specific aren't specifically tied to e tied to each other in that re in no, in that no, regard. No. Mo most of the times, they are tied to each other. I mean, when, when you are not, well, if you are doing nothing strange, you use the field relevant, your relevant mm -hmm. field. Uh, when the action is more complicated, is more uh, extreme, is more weird, I don't know, or is more funny, you can use, you are free to use a different field to, um, to tell that to do. Mm -hmm. And in... The now, in that reg now, when it comes to the notion of scars and experiences, which I'm guessing mm -hmm. is going, I'm guessing is going to be the um, the system of advancement for Broken Compass. How is that? How is that going to work out? In Broken Compass, we are several system of advancement. Two, mm -hmm. mainly. Um, the the basic system is um, at the beginning of every season finale, so mm -hmm. before you play your last or your mid-season finale, if you're playing a long season, uh, you have an advancement, um, meaning you gain two uh, skill points and another expertise. So you, you're getting stronger in a normal way. During your season, uh, max two times uh, before each uh, each finale or mid-season finale, uh, during the play, mm -hmm. in a particularly um, important moment of your story, um, the master could grant you an, um, a scar on experience. And they um, have similar functionality <laughs> than expertise, but uh, they can be called both by the player and the master. For example, the first time I see the mummy uh, come back to life and mm -hmm. try to hit me and all my comrades, I may, may uh, maybe I, the, the master, I don't know, asked me for a terror challenge. Oh my God, uh, mm -hmm. test your coolness. And I failed miserably and I was 
playing maybe a, a character that did not believe in the supernatural beings and always said no it's always or well, everything explainable i don't know uh, the master could give me a, a scar mm -hmm. oh my god it, it's real i don't know it, it's um, a phrase the scar or the experience it's a small phrase and from now on the master uh, could call my scar to give me a disadvantage uh, to to uh, take away one dice from my pool during a challenge maybe i i'm trying to shoot the mummy and he say no you are scared shitless from the, so i you you not throw six dice you just throw five um, but i can uh call the same sentences to uh roll my character accordingly and mm -hmm. to win uh luck coin which is another uh, mechanic in the games when I uh, choose to not to do the smartest things but to play accordingly to my words to live by to my experiences and to my scars that's when I need to win uh, a luck coin which I then use to grant several benefits during the game mm -hmm. uh, same way the expertise it, the, the same thing but I can call the experience uh, sorry uh, I can call an experience, uh, example, I don't know, I, I, I uh, punch the, the bear from before and I win, incredibly, I don't know, I was very lucky with the dice and mm -hmm. do uh, some, something, some great moves, I uh, punch a bear empty-handed and I gain the experience uh, stronger than a bear, I don't know, so when I'm fighting I can call my stronger than a bear to grant another dice during a bro or a fist fight. Mm -hmm. and so on and there's a cap uh, for these uh, things which are not um, not more than two in each arc uh, from a z from a finale to another mm -hmm. and it uh, serves not only as the purpose to advance in the character but um, it serves also to the master to see if there's some someone in the group that isn't playing uh, a lot like others so if I see after, I don't know, four sessions uh, in a group of four, three people has one or two experiences and one zero, maybe I need to uh, make him or her um, play more because mm -hmm. he needs to, to be at the center of attention, to have his moment, to, to win uh, a scar or a connected experience. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Now, when it comes... Now, um, when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the tags, the one of the things mm -hmm. that I did notice, given the um, two examples that were that were given, mm -hmm. is is the fact that it prov that each provides a starting package, as as it would be, um, in in some in some of the or in some of the um. Early early instances was were the packages a bit more defined, or did you guys always intend for it to be um, a, cu a couple a couple starting pillars and then um, a bit more free form? Uh, the tag were meant to uh, to make the the character creation easier. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the main uh, purpose uh, yeah. in the game. Um, it serves to, to the person, I, I know a lot of people playing games that spend a lot of time creating characters because they think, I don't know, I, I want, I know what characters I want, but I don't know um, how could I transform my idea into uh, the, um, a set of skill. So we say, we give it to you. What, what do you want to play? And I don't know. Uh, an action hero soldier like the one you see in those movies, the war movies. Okay, choose your tags. We give you the set of skills you need to play what you want. And then you may always uh, add two free points, two free skill points. Not all, and then it's not the end. At the end of your first uh, session, you may also uh, change another two skill points. Mm -hmm. Well, after I play my my character, I like him, okay, but I don't know, this, he, uh, I want him to speak better, to have more eloquence or more, I don't know, more charm. So I, I don't need this 
I don't know technological knowledge, and but I, I can know this thing, this type of things only after playing my cards for at, at least a session. Mm -hmm. So in this way, you are free to have a character ready in really one minute, then play it and then adjust it yeah. to uh, make it more similar to your idea. Now. Getting to getting to uh, di getting to die rules for for a moment. Um, now first, now given the fact that the ma that the main way that the fortune master has to modify f rolls for difficulty, um, mm -hmm. what would what would be what would be the some what would be some of the um, guidelines get guidelines given so that. Um, advantages and disadvantages don't get too out of hand. Ah, so uh, we gave um, a set of guidelines mm -hmm. uh, regarding both the difficulty levels. As I said before, there are four difficulty levels, mm -hmm. and uh, most of the times, the adventurer will face a critical difficulty, which is a three of a kind. Most of the times. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you're facing uh, something really, really dangerous, it's a four of a, it's an extreme uh, danger, an extreme challenge, which are four of a kind. While the fifth of a kind is when it's impossible. It's called impossible. So when you are going alone uh, against, I don't know, an, half an army, so it's impossible. Or you are trying to run into a volcano, an exploding volcano, to 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 uh, take the jewel. It, it, it's an impossible. And while the basic danger, the basic challenges serves uh, to make things a little more interesting, because in the game you can add several dangers, several in, in, a, in a single um, dice throw, I can need to obtain uh, both a basic and a critical success. Mm -hmm. For example, the, the, the bridge under me is collapsing, uh, so I need a critical success to uh, grab a rope, but I'm bringing with me the Golden Idol, so I need a basic success to not let the Golden Idol fall into the river. Uh, so the, this type of things uh, makes things a little bit interesting, more interesting, and it's full of examples. While uh, to... Um, Advantages and disadvantages. There are some ways in which uh, the things are uh, scripted. I don't know. When you gave uh, good or bad feelings, the adventurer has, uh, has a, an advantage or a disadvantage in a certain field. Um, some weapons, some gear uh, could give you uh, advantage or disadvantage doing uh, some some specific action. Apart from that, we uh, repeat always is um, a matter of clear uh, situation. When situation is clearly on the adventurer side or clearly against them, then you need to give advantage or a, dis uh, a disadvantage or an advantage. Um, for example, when you are in a brawl severely outnumbered, you will have an. Uh, a disadvantage when every adventurer are uh, doing the same things. Maybe they are pushing the same enormous uh, stone door all together. They gain advantage by helping out each other. So there are several examples and several uh, little rules here and there to help masters manage both uh, difficulties and advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And the the uh, the other thing is now I I know you talked about risk and there's also and of course there's also the concept of for lack of a better term re-risking. Um, yeah. When when um when doing that when. When doing playtesting, I'm curious how often people were willing to try doing um, doing the all or nothing rule, i.e., re-risking. Ah, <laughs> a lot of times. 
<laughs> it depends. When you, I don't know, when you roll six dice and you uh, just uh, have obtained a, a two of a kind and you risk and you obtain, uh, and you uh, transform your two in a three of a kind, but you have three dice to reroll. You look at yourself. You're like, I, I can make a four of a kind. It's a great, it's a great success in broken compass. So uh, many, many, many people are willing to risk another time. Uh, or when, when things got uh, messier during the last part of a session, you know, and, and you need, you know, you need those special success to overcome this danger, and you are ready. It's all or nothing. I don't care. I'm dying anyway. I, I need to. Uh, cut up the rope before the, the, the everything falls. So I reroll. Uh, I, I see it succeed more than half times, at least one risk. And the all of nothing uh, during the last part, uh, the last uh, challenges of a section, it, it happens. It happens mm -hmm. a lot. And of, co of course, I can e I can easily see it happening at my table and ha and having people be and having people at the table be reminded that the dice gods are a <laughs> wonderful a wonderful model of equality for all of us because it does not matter your ethnicity, race, orientation, political affiliation, no. religion, the dice gods hate you. <laughs> hey, that's old, I say. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and in the in in that in that particular regard, when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the con the concept of um da of dangers, mm -hmm. um, now obvious obviously obviously there's go there's going to be a high there's going to be a higher risk in, with those and how and um how similar or di how similar or different would that be to just a normal challenge uh difficulties from uh, dangerous and nor uh, dangerous and normal challenge. Mm -hmm. a, a challenge is um you have a challenge when adventurer try to do something that may go wrong in some way mm -hmm. You have a danger when the adventurer tried to do something that, if gone wrong, could end up killing him or hurt him very, very badly. That's dangerous. The definition of dangerous in the game. Mm -hmm. So every time uh, the, the the bad outcome from your task, from your uh, dice throw, is to get badly hurt or worse. You have a danger, as I can see before. As I said before, you you may have one to three danger in a single uh, roll. So, if someone is shooting you and you are falling and you are uh, trying to uh, grab the jewel that is falling with you, you are three dangers at the same time. Mm -hmm. And when you I don't know is a uh, three of a kind, three of a kind, and two of a kind, and you toss the dice. You, um, I don't know, have just a three of a kind. You have to choose: I uh, dodge the bullet, or I try to grab uh, something to not fall off, or I grab the jewel and I, I don't know, uh, and let my fortune, my luck, saving me for for every uh, from every dangers I run. If I if I can, if I have enough luck to do that. If I haven't enough luck to do that, I'm dead. Obviously, at the same point, at a certain point, even the best adventurer uh, may may encounter the certain death, as yeah. we call it. So that that's the the, the only difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other uh, the other other things uh, that I that I like a lot in the game mechanics uh, when we face a danger together, and one of us. Uh, is doing a lot of success. He can give your, uh, his success to others to let others um, overcome the danger. So it, it, it's a way to help each other out. 
if the enormous giant boulder is rolling onto us and we need uh, a tree of a kind to uh, to run uh, we have three of us two of us fail but the the, the last one has a lot of uh, uh, advantages it's, it does the maximum nine dice and he obtained three uh, three of a kind three different three of a kind he could use one on his health and the other two on his two companion he would give grab every every adventurer and jump mm -hmm. i don't know saving everyone alone like in the movies yeah. obviously. um now i now obviously obviously failing danger ca causes the loss of luck but yes are but um beyond that are there are there ways to to utilize to utilize luck to um ha to help out in roles because I often I often talk about in games the notion of an extra effort uh, system. Uh, basically, no. For that, you have your luck coin, mm -hmm. which is uh, another thing besides luck. Your luck coin is uh, something you can spend when you, when the player wants to obtain uh, a benefit to to grant uh, his adventurer benefit. Uh, there are different. For example. Uh, he can survive when he should have died because he's out of luck. Mm -hmm. Or he can... Um, a luck coin could grant, grant an adventurer uh, four of a kind, an extreme success, before tossing the dice. So if I want to be sure to uh, overcome this challenge or this danger, I could... If, oh no, I, I close my eyes and I go blindly into the flames because my luck is on my side this time, and I can spend my luck coin. Uh, the, the unicity of a luck mm -hmm. coin is that when you spend it, you not always lose it. When you spend a luck coin, you toss a coin. Uh, if you have uh, a tail, you take it. You, you, <laughs> you, you may take the coin with you, not give it to the master. If you toss the coin and obtain a head, you gave the coin to the master. You lose mm -hmm. your luck coin. So, hypothetically speaking, a luck coin is forever. <laughs> it may never <laughs> leave you, leave your side if you're very, very, very lucky. Or if you leave your side the first time you use it. We, we love this <laughs> mm -hmm. little challenge, this little risk <laughs> of using your, your, your luck coins. So that, that is your... A hero effort. I don't know. It's your decision as a player. I, I don't want the the the, the, the dice god <laughs> to decide for me. I prefer to be secure. Use a lock code. Mm -hmm. um, and then now taking all taking all of that taking all that into account. Now, first off, I do want to congratulate you guys for um, completely smashing the initial goal that you had. Because um, you. you you had uh, you had asked for oh, I spoke a bit too soon. At the time of this recording, you had asked for four thousand euros, mm -hmm. and currently that's at thirty one point five thousand. Yes. Um. And I know, and I know, I know that there's still eight days left. Um. Once that passes, and once everything is is um is all set is all settled when it comes to the extra paperwork after a Kickstarter finishes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, what time? What would you say would be the time frame you'd you'd be eyeing in terms of a re in terms of a, re a release date? Um, are you uh, thinking? Uh, so we looking a forward to um, give out the digital version of everything. Mm -hmm. um, in December, before the uh, before Christmas, uh, the, the digital version. While the physical version should arrive in March. All right. I, I you should because it, it, it's something that needs to be shipped, and I don't know which words we will find in March. So I'm sorry. To, I, I did not, I do not have anything for granted, but mm -hmm. um, 
we get, we will give uh, uh, the the files to be printed in, in December. So January, February, they will depart. I think for March, everything should be set because I I, I tell you maybe uh, not everyone knows uh, the games is already finished in Italian. Obviously. Mm -hmm. So this Kickstarter is just for the translation. Uh, our Italian bakers will receive the PDF as soon as this campaign ends. So uh, in a eight nine days from now, and uh, the physical version in November. So uh, we we have obviously the the technical times for the translators to to do their job, the magical job. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not just later, obviously. Yeah, I, I just say to 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 uh, let everyone be at ease because there is other another person who is very very much good at me in uh, in speaking and writing English that is currently working on the translation, mm -hmm. uh, as you can see uh, from the quick start. Uh, so that 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 would be time for everything to be uh, given to. Our Vegas. Yeah. I hope. Which I, I can de I can definitely um I can de I can definitely see see how that how that's gonna work out. Um what do you, what would you say the page size uh, not the page size but the um page count is going is going to be for the book. I'd Im I'd imagine that the page count for the Italian version isn't going to be too different from the English version. They're probably going to be about the same page. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's not easy to say. I think it would be quite the same. The Italian version, uh, the um, core book, uh, 230 pages, 240 pages. Uh, Golden Age are 208 pages. And Luck Tales, uh, the complete Luck Tales are 224 pages, I think. All right. So, which, something like this. Which, given the material, I'd say that's fairly standard. Um, yeah. And I'll definitely be looking forward to seeing how it sh how it shakes out when the time comes. <laughs> thank you. Um, with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for braving the hell that is time zones to come all the way up to the <laughs> temple. <laughs> Thank you for adjusting the time, your uh, schedule mm -hmm. for our time. Now, I, I don't know, uh, here in Italy are 20 past 9 p.m., mm -hmm. so I don't know. Uh, it's very different <laughs> our yeah. time frame. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for the opportunity mm -hmm. to let us come here and talk yep. about our game. Uh, as, I, as I said at, at the beginning, we are very excited because it's it's a first time, mm -hmm. <laughs> a very, very, very first time to let someone from another country uh, look at our games and see what he thinks. So, yeah. hoping for the better. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, just to make sure we don't tempt the gods of irony. No. Got to knock on wood. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um. And of course, of course, anytime you see fit to return, the door the door is always open. As I Thank always you. say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Okay. <laughs> Seems fair. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and of course, a sincere thanks to everybody who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness at play here. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!